Hey you guys, welcome to a new episode of Food and the Single Guy with me, your very own Amaru. Now on this episode of Food and the Single Guy, I'm gonna cook you something from the homeland yet again and it's called Ksaba Dokung or Kasaba Dokung or Dokung or even Doku. Now, this dish has its origins in Africa and it's made its way to South America and the Caribbean through the transatlantic slave trade. And the Japanese people in my country also have a similar dish, it's called Lamet. I have no clue what the connection is between these two dishes but um, all I can tell you is that both of them exist, okay? I have no clue how the recipe made its way from Africa to Indonesia or vice versa, but boo-boo, it is what it is. Now, one of my online friends, her name is Gabrielle, she shared with me a link about the origins of this dish, and I'm gonna share that link with you in the video description box below the video. It's a very interesting read, and Gabrielle, I wanna say thank you very much, because that's how we learn. This dish is a highly requested one here on my channel, and I'm very happy to share with you today my recipe. All the ingredients and the measurements will be posted below, so without further ado, let us continue. Okay, you guys, so let's talk about the ingredients for this dish because what I have here is my frozen cassava, which I purchased at the tropical supermarket in the frozen food section. And this, by the way, is completely defrosted. Now, do keep in mind, if you cannot find frozen grated cassava in your neck of the woods, you're gonna have to grate your own fresh cassava. And this, by the way, is a one kilogram pack as you can see, that's about two pounds. We're not gonna use all of it, we're gonna use half of it, okay? What we're also gonna use is about 50 grams of dried grated coconut flakes. These are store-bought, but if you feel adventurous enough, go right ahead and grate your own coconut. I wasn't in the mood. We're also gonna use about 150 grams of white sugar. We are also going to add some of my famous rum-soaked raisins. Oh yes, they smell delicious. We're gonna add some cinnamon. We're gonna add a pinch of salt. We're gonna add some coconut milk. And the reason we're using coconut milk, you guys, is because we're using the store-bought dried grated coconut flakes. These are very dry. If you add them to the batter, your batter is gonna be too dry. The coconut milk adds a little bit of moisture to the batter and that's what you like. But traditionally, people use freshly grated coconut and therefore, they never use the coconut milk. But since I live in Europe, I'm using store-bought coconut flakes. I'm not in the mood to grate my own coconut. And where is my coconut? My coconut is right here. I'm not in the mood, boo-boo. So that is why I went with the store-bought coconut flakes and because we're using the store-bought flakes you guys one more time that is why we're using a little bit of the coconut milk we're also going to use a little bit of vanilla we're going to use a little bit of almond extract and last but not least we are going to use these fresh banana leaves which cost me an arm and a leg okay all right but anything for you baby anything for you so let's move on. Okay, so to my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add half of the cassava. There we go. I'm also gonna add the sugar. I'm gonna add some of the coconut, not all of it because I don't want it to overpower the batter. I think this would be sufficient. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of cinnamon. One, two. We're also gonna add about a quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract, and don't go crazy with this one, you guys, because it's very, very strong. It will overpower your dish. There. We will also be adding two teaspoons of vanilla extract. One, a two. We're also gonna add about half a teaspoon of salt and the salt is going to bring out the flavor of the coconut. And next, we're gonna give this a good stir. All right, beautiful people. So as you can see, my batter is still very dense and rather dry. As I explained earlier, we're gonna add some of the coconut milk to the batter, and that's gonna add moisture to your batter. All right? All right. Here we go. Just a little bit, not a hell of a lot. And then you're gonna give it a nice stir.
Okay, you guys, I think we're about ready to add the raisins. And before I do that, I want to share this with you because my mom tells me that her mother always made two batches, one batch with raisins and one batch without the raisins because some of her siblings like the ones with the raisins and some of them like the ones without the raisins. So grandma made two batches. Now personally I am not going to make two batches. I will make one batch because I'm not a big fan of this dish to begin with and I will only eat this if the raisins are included. Alright? Alright. And I'm using about three spoonfuls of the rum soaked raisins. Alright? Now let's give this another stir. Ooh, honey. Now, you know me, I don't do sweets. I'm not a big fan of sweets and stuff like that. And that is why I never make them on this channel because I live by myself and I'm not gonna eat a bunch of these things, okay? All right, you guys, so this is looking good. We are now ready to stuff the banana leaves with this goodness. Okay, you guys, moving on to the banana leaves. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to wash them, then I'm going to dry them, then I'm going to cut them to size, and then I am going to briefly toast them, just like so. Ever so gently. Okay, you guys, so as you can see, my leaf is nice and shiny. And the reason we toast the leaves ever so briefly is because we want to make them more pliable, all right? In addition to that, the banana leaf releases a certain flavor that matches perfectly well with the batter. And now we are ready to stuff the banana leaf with the batter. Just a spoonful. Don't add too much batter, you guys. Just like that, you're going to shape it a little bit. There we go. And then next, what we're going to do, we are going to close the leaf. We're going to turn this into a nice little parcel, if you will. And there you have it. And you can use a toothpick to secure the opening, but that's not necessary because we're going to place the packets in a steamer just like this. And the opening is going to face downward. It's not going to pop open. All right. So I'm going to finish making the rest of the packets and then I'm going to steam them. And when they're all done, I'm going to show you what they look like. Now, when your dokung is finished, it should look a little something like this. And the texture of the dokung should be soft, but somewhat chewy. Keep in mind that your batter should never be runny. Not at all. And by the way, you need to steam these for about 25 minutes to a half an hour. I shared these with my neighbor and my mom and they both very much approved. If you decide to try these yourself, let me know how they turned out because I'm always interested in hearing from you. In the meantime, do be well, take care, happy cooking, happy eating, don't add crazy to the craziness, and I will see you when I see you. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.